More than 2% so far this week. Is the rally back on? And how should investors play these markets? Let's talk to Craig Peckham, equity trading strategist at Jefferies & Company, and Eugene Profit, CEO and portfolio manager at Profit Investment Management. Eugene Profit, sometimes it's all about profits. There's a front page story it's a in great the Wall Street. By the way. It's a lovely name, and you're thank a good you. man, and we thank you for coming on. I want to ask you about this morning's Wall Street Journal story, their lead story. Producer prices, that's what these companies have to pay, are going up a lot faster than consumer prices. That's what they get. Is that going to squeeze profits? Is that another one of these issues out there, Eugene? Yeah, I, I think so, Larry. I, I think whenever you have um, input prices going up and companies not having pricing power, um, you're going to have operating margins contracting. And you're looking at an environment where um, the last year they're looking at um, a little bit more difficult comparisons, and so we think that that's going to weigh on companies coming into these third quarter earnings. Well, I want to go to Craig Peckham because I think he disagrees with you a little bit. Uh, Craig, you're saying that the general tone of corporate profit outlooks happens to be a little bit better, le leading you to become a little bit more bearish in this scenario, yes? Well, I tell you, I think, you know, you have to lean bullish at this stage of the quarter. Oh, forgive me, they, bullish, yes. Yeah, and, and I think that the rationale there is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're getting to the point in the quarter with only two weeks left where the earnings picture is really going to start to crystallize. Uh, by and large, I think what we've seen so far has been um, uh, relatively constructive insofar as uh, most of what we've heard from quarter, corporate America has been in line with uh, second quarter expectations. Uh, it's our expectation as we move into June quarter earnings season, uh, the bias is probably going to be to the upside, particularly as uh, expectations here, at least in real time to be appear to be somewhat defensive uh, we're going to be uh, particularly focused here on what's happening with the consumer uh, in, in so far as may looked like it was disrupted by a, a lot of weather trends which mm -hmm. we're not sure was necessarily fundamental in fact the checks that we're sort of getting uh, on June on, on a mid-month basis Craig, I'm interested. Some, rebound there. some of the, the companies you like cat is one in particular very much a global company what are your concerns about Europe right now and how that might affect profitability at a corporation like cat yeah, no question that the European issue needs to be recognized, and uh, r and have been trying to feather that into the models overall. Uh, but by and large, what, what the net call that we're making is that we, while we think there's obviously an FX translation headwind uh, and probably some marginal impact to demand, we're trying to pick companies that uh, we think are going to manage to weather through uh, no matter what happens. Uh, CAT's a good example of that. Uh, if you look at the numbers that CAT put out this morning in terms of their, their month of May performance, we saw just spectacular sequential month in per performance uh, in terms of their shipments. Uh, we, we think you can't look through that. It's indicative to that this the corporate economic and profit recovery continues to move forward well okay but Eugene you've had this huge move in the dollar king dollar up almost 20 percent uh, year to date or going back to December oftentimes that imparts a deflationary slow growth impact on the economy yes. and yet gold keeps rising whether the dollar goes up or the dollar goes down gold keeps rising now are people hiding in gold is that what's going on are you hiding in gold well I'm not hiding in gold but I think that there is a section of the um, investing public um, that is I think you just have to look at the euro and European contagion fears to get your answer to why I think the dollar is actually strengthening to some extent why the economy actually is not improving and, and it really is actually a good thing in some respects otherwise I think you'd look at interest rates being a little bit higher and you look at the 10-year and you're not seeing an interest rate increase there so you have a disconnect really between what I believe the economic data is showing and you know what's going on overall in the economic environment. Yeah, Eugene there's a lot to I, I would imagine scare folks out there I mean between the European situation between the the, the escalating job situation yep. people still not finding work between gold moving to new highs the dollar becoming stronger uh, which of course affects profitability I mean what would you say is the overall theme right now that makes you a little bit nervous. Well, and don't forget commercial real estate. Um, we, we still don't have our and solution there. We're going to talk there, about that coming right? up. So I, I think that overall, there's just too many different headwinds um, that's getting a little bit of short drift in um, economic analysis. I, there seems to be a sense that um, the euro is going to rebound, um, um, you know, near term here. And it has over the course of the last, you know, two weeks. And that's why you've had this increase in prices. And hey, we haven't even talked about taxes and right? higher tax environment. Well, or, I'm about or, to. or financial about regulation to. reform. I I want to raise that question. Uh, Craig, you're the optimist today. And look, we could debate whether the recovery is slower or faster or whatever. I think it's slower, but I don't know that for sure. But I want to ask you, the tax man, we're going to hit a tax wall next year. Dividends, capital gains, estates. 
That's what investors, uh, you know, they're all going to qualify for higher tax rates. So let's say this rally continues a wee bit longer. Wouldn't it be wise to sell into it and take the profits before the IRS does? Well, there may be something to that, and I think that's feeding a bit into this uh, real uh, sort of collective sense of negativity that I think is, you know, part of the reason why uh, the, the S&P continues to trade at uh, a relatively attractive multiple. And I think that's uh, another example of climbing this wall of worry here. There are so many things for uh, investors to worry about here fundamentally and more structurally as it pertains to tax rates. Uh, and I continue to come back to what we think is going to dominate uh, the, the market sentiment here over the next 30 to 60 days, and I think it's really going to come back to the U.S. corporate earnings stream, and I think that can end up overshadowing. Overshadowing some of these global macro concerns, which have really been the tail wagging so the dog so in the U.S. So, what about this problem that we talked about with Eugene? That the fact is, producer prices, the prices that companies have to pay to put their products together, is growing much faster than the prices received for selling them. What about that? Is there a profit squeeze? Because all the good news and profits has been bolstering the market as it must. Now the question is, are we going to get a round of mediocre profits numbers? And might that really disappoint investors on top of the tax wall? Well, I think you need to look at this more selectively. And what I mean by that is I think there's certainly sectors of, of the marketplace where this profit squeeze is a very real dynamic. Our analysts here have uh, pointed out that, for example, in the consumer staple section of the market in, in the consumer products world, that input cost uh, inflation is something that's uh, going to present a, a, a genuine threat in terms of margins. Where you want to focus are, are areas where, where we think there's pricing power and where we think companies have wrung out just an incredible amount of cost over the last three years. That leads us to back to, to certain of the industrials categories. I mentioned uh, Caterpillar is an example. <laughs> Deer's another. We like the industrial and machinery like semis. category. And, and semis are another group as well. It's, it's, a, it's a sector that we think has been very, very disciplined uh, as the market and, uh, and demand has corrected, leaving uh, a lot of room here for uh, improve, improved operating leverage here with modest improvements in demand. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. When we come back, reports BP Chairman Carl Henrik Sundberg is seeking advice on candidates to replace Hayward. Mm. We're going to be debating whether BP should hire an American CEO. Yeah, he's got to be able to fight, right? Who well, needs someone really strong? You have a name? Well, I was saying John Wayne, John Wayne. right? John we Wayne. need a John Wayne. Back, Why not? Back, well, <laughs> can someone fix the well? <laughs> hey, okay. Plus, investors got very weak housing reports. We just heard Eugene saying that he's concerned about housing there. Is there more data on the way next week? We're going to debate whether that double dip is, in fact, a reality coming. How about Arnold Schwarzenegger? Ooh. He's going to need a job soon. You're watching CNBC. We are first in business worldwide. <laughs>